Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Quantum Action. And we've got Chris Harper with us today from Toronto in Canada. Hi, Chris. Welcome to the show. Hey, Fab. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Excited to talk to the lovely Fab. It's always a good time. Okay, so Chris is an entrepreneur, young entrepreneur in Toronto. Um, he has a number of ventures he's been working on over the last few years. He's going to tell us uh, about these two particular ventures he's been recently involved with. Um, Chris, over to you. Yeah, so I've started a number of businesses, software and everything, but most recently um, I had a cocktail mixer business. It was a health conscious cocktail mixer, zero calories, combated your hangover, all that good stuff. We were sold nationwide across Canada and major retailers. Um, and as I was telling you earlier, Fab, uh, it was going well, things were going well, and then the, the pandemic hit. And when the pandemic hit, it closed out a lot of our biggest accounts. And one of our biggest accounts was GNC and GNC did six figures in business for us all the time. But then they weren't considered a grocery store in Canada. So if you weren't considered a grocery store in Canada, you were not allowed to operate. And uh, that really put a huge hit on our business, an unexpected hit on our business. Um, and at the same time, during that that time period when I had that business and, and the pandemic happened, I had another business, a software business that verifies higher education claims globally and instantly. Mm -hmm. And I had to make a tough decision. And the tough decision was, do I want to pour a ton of money into a business that just got punched in the face and is on the ground, mm -hmm. blood out, all that kind of stuff? Or do I go over here to the software business? Do I kill that business and just focus on the thing um, that won't be affected by a pandemic or anything like that? Yeah. Ultimately, I made the decision to shut down the, the cocktail mixer business and focus strictly on the software business. It was a tough decision, uh, yeah. but it was the right decision. And I know, Fab, you know this too. There's a lot of people, and I'm a believer of this too, like never give up, keep going, but you also don't want to be stupid. If something yeah, isn't working- Yeah, happened to me too. I mean, I had to, yeah. <laughs> I had to shut down uh, a while back and you know, this was way before the pandemic though, because uh, it just wasn't working. It wasn't going where it needed to do. And you just need to, you know, you, you need to cut, the, the, cut it while you can, uh, cut your losses while you can. Otherwise it's just, you're just going to dig a bigger hole. Yep. And there's always a new opportunity. There's always a new business. I always, I believe that you should see it to a point, like find out where it is working. It can work. And then okay. if it can't work, then that's when you want to get rid of it. The faster you fail, the better, the faster you win, the better. Right. But it's just yeah, exactly. uh, get rid of it. So yeah, that was a pivotal moment brought on by the pandemic. I actually, I'm a believer in it was meant to be. I learned yeah. a lot. Like you would know, Fab, you learned yeah. so much uh, with the business. I learned so much. I learned that I love software. Um, I definitely love software. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, it was so a great- So tell us about your software moment. business, because this is interesting, because you, you told me you had an offer a few, was it a few months ago to, to someone wanted to buy your company and you turned it down. So tell us a bit about yeah. what, what the product exactly is, uh, what it does, and, and, and tell us about where you see this going for the future and, and why you turned the deal down. Yeah. So I guess to start, Fab, I'll kind of just give a high level of what, what we do. Yeah. Um, it's super simple. Okay, what's, what's, the name, what's, this, what's the name of the business? And we'll post yeah. the link below. It's zipscript.com. I'll yeah. give you the link and you can, yeah. can yeah, yeah. post it. Yeah, it'll be um, but re really simple. Um, our ethos is simple scales, complexity fails. Um, and our business, we simply verify higher education claims. So college and university degrees from across the world. So from India to Australia, to Canada, to the United States, to the UK, to Dubai, to the UAE. And we do it instantly. Um, so instead of using a paper transcript, a call center to verify degrees, we do it digitally. We do it instantly. No one on the planet is doing this right now. We're the only company doing this. And we work with some of the largest background check companies in the world. So if somebody's performing a background check on you, um, some major company, odds are they could be using our API to do your education verification if that's included in the process. So super simple, super cool. We basically just looked at an industry, Fab and anyone listening, we looked at an antiquated industry that was using old ways and old school technology. We took a bunch of existing technologies that mm -hmm. exist in the marketplace, existing software, mishmashed it together and created an automated solution to something that didn't have any automation. Um, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell um, in so, terms so of what we for do. Those, for those watching or listening, how many people do you have working in the business? Working in the business, I, like employees? I, yeah. I mean, do you have an office where people in or is everybody working remotely? Can you? No, we're fully... 
Yeah, great question. We're fully remote. Uh, we've always been remote since day one. We started, I guess, kind of still with still the pandemic, um, right. especially in Canada. Uh, but we've committed to being fully remote. We love it. Our team loves it. Currently, there's seven of us, uh, okay. including myself, all software engineers. Um, and it's we can achieve a lot um, with software with so little in terms of manpower. And uh, I think we're, we're a testament to that, um, which is nice. Yeah, so your so your overheads are really low because I mean, if if you're not apart from paying for the software engineers, but you don't have a fancy office where you have to pay nope. for everything, um, and working remotely, I guess you get a lot of stuff done a lot quicker. Uh, yeah, travel to meetings and that. Yeah, and look, we do do meetings. There's ways to do remote work properly. Um, yeah. Like I am very adamant on meeting with my team members one on one. You know, at least once a week, talking to them about their family, talking about their lives. We'll do like a team night online. I, I believe you can get the same kind of bond you get in person online now because I've seen it done. But yeah, yeah, the overhead, this is a huge thing, Fab, just in general on business. It's like this chase your drink business, which you're familiar with, cocktail yeah. mixer for everyone listening. That had huge overhead, huge supply chain, huge stuff, all this stuff. And your profit margins are significantly lower. And the only way to get the profit margins up on any level that's that's kind of reasonable is with scale. Um, software, completely different game. Profit margins are way bigger, you know, overheads way lower. Um, the competition is more. A lot of people are competing in software uh, and stuff like that, but like, it's just your mind. Like you can get a product out if you know how to write code or you know someone who knows how to write code, you don't need any money to get a basic version of the product out. You can just put your head down and get some work done and have some sort of bare bones thing out the door. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very interesting because there's a lot of debate going on right now, especially after you know lockdowns and that, where people have had their their teams working um, away from the office. Is are they more productive in the office or at home? Um, is it a good idea to go and get another office in Central New York or London or Toronto or wherever it may be, um, or can I just have this business work remotely? But as you said, there are ways of making it work remotely. Obviously, depends mm -hmm. on the type of business. And, and for me too, like I, I'm speaking from my personal experience, I don't have a large team, right? I have a small team, so it's a lot easier to manage. Now, as your team size grows, there's going to be complexities that are added to that with the remote work, but I think it's it's here to stay for the most part. I know you, you, there was an interesting thing that happened with uh, Coinbase at the time when they filed their S1 to go public, where they were the first company that didn't list an official office address. Um so I think we're going to see the future. I mean, I hire some young employees. I have some older employees, um, but I know from, from the younger employees, software engineers coming up, like this is how they see it going for the future. Um, yeah, I, I so agree. So. I mean, I mean, why not? Yeah. Why not work remotely? Why not go and live in Wyoming somewhere and have a nice big backyard instead of having to live in New York, exactly. you the office five minutes down the road. I mean, it, it makes perfect sense. And today we have the technology to do this. Um, you know, and we haven't even started the whole virtual reality thing yet when you all put your virtual reality headset on and you actually sit next to each other and talk to each other and shake hands virtually. Um, that's coming. That's coming very soon. So it's just going to get a lot easier with technology to be able to do this kind of thing virtually. Um, I mean, people will still travel. Don't get me wrong, because uh, a face to face meeting is always better. But, you know, a lot of the day to day stuff. I mean, if you have the opportunity to work remotely, you could hire anybody from anywhere. So now you've got, more, you've got a more a vast array of people that you can choose from. You're not limited to people that live downtown Toronto. Um, Fabrizio, it's almost like you segued into part of the reason our business exists, Zipscript. That's one of our, our selling points, right? If you're trying to hire remotely, so you want to hire someone from the Ukraine or, or yeah. India or Indonesia to work for you, what's well, way harder to do a background check on somebody from a different country. Yes. Um, and you want to make sure you're hiring the right person. It's costly to hire the wrong person. That's what we offer these background check companies speed and no borders. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very, very yeah. interesting. So now yeah. we, we see a lot of things have changed now with lockdowns. I mean, air travel, uh, more people working remotely. Um, what do you see happening? You're a young entrepreneur. You're into social media, um, and technology and software, where do you see business going in the next few years? And what are the opportunities do you think that are out there for everyone or for those that are willing to jump <laughs> into something? Yeah. I, I think it comes back to what I kind of that decision I made about Chase to get rid of that business and, and to go into the software business. And I had been in it before. Um, I think as an entrepreneur, you should, you know, 
there's a game, we're all playing a game. You should be aware of what's going on geopolitically, globally, and all that kind of stuff. And that's part of the reason I went into software. I said, look, I don't, if something like this were to happen again in the pandemic, for example, will it affect this business? No, it's not going to. Great. Right. So I think building on that, um, building on stuff that you know that can't be messed with in a sense. Um, should another situation like this, where I believe it was overreach um, uh, by the, the powers that be, but uh, planning for it, planning for it, building a future, being smart about it. But what was, the, what was the second part of the question? What were you asking again? Yeah, I mean, what opportunities do you think are out there for the future? I mean, we see, you know, AI, uh, software, mm -hmm. internet, social media. Uh, what, what other things do you, th do you think? I mean, how has the pandemic and the lockdowns change people's perception of things and how is this going to affect the future of business i mean just like you and i doing this podcast right now uh the remote work you mentioned people being comfortable to do zoom calls you can close deals on the internet now where before yes. when i was doing chase that was not possible like you had to go to the executive office go there talk to them meet them in the boardroom close the deal nothing wrong with that um but this is actually a lot more efficient a lot better i think efficiencies anything that makes people's life more efficient is going to be better you saw it during the pandemic everything was accelerated now it's kind of decelerating back to kind of a normal but i think automation and i don't think we need to reinvent the wheel like with my business a lot of the time it's like there's still a lot of industries that are antiquated old and need new processes or need automation to be brought to them and uh, i think if you look for those and in the boring places too fab education yes. um, yeah. education is forgotten all the time you know there, there's definitely terrible things going on that could be fixed in education um, so i just think look for automation you don't need to reinvent the wheel look for an old industry and think how can i apply some modern day technology to an old industry and i think it's important to be an entrepreneur um because you get the freedom uh being able to do what you want in a situation like you mentioned moving to wyoming or wherever it is but uh yeah that's pretty much it just you know look for old industries look for something you can automate and, and go for it yeah there's a, a I, I mean a lot of education is moved online now a lot of the universities <clears throat> started doing their courses on on zoom and the lectures and that and uh, and this has just uh, made a lot of people realize well why do i have to go and live in boston and pay boston rent when i could be yeah. my parents farm in wyoming and do all my lessons via zoom um yeah it's a lot cheaper because i mean when you're going to the university you have to factor in the fact that you, you have to move and you have to live somewhere that's not you know where family are and you've got to pay and, and if you're going yeah. to university like in central london or Boston or New York or whatever, where it's expensive to live, you know, you've got to factor that cost in. Um, but if you can do this all online, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big advantage. Uh, and also it for the itself, they don't have to have, you know, dorms for students if they're doing everything online. Yeah, that whole conversation is interesting. Um, higher education in general is very fascinating to me. I don't know where that's going. I know people, I know enrollment rates are higher than they've ever been. I know people are still going to institutions like that, but I know they had issues during the pandemic with people delaying their degrees. So like people felt like they weren't getting the experience if they weren't in the dorm, if they weren't on campus. Yeah. Um, and I know there was, there was quite a bit. Of, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, I'm not entirely sure where that's going to Yeah, go. but you know, there's a debate going on right now. Is it worthwhile spending four years in university? And I had this, this discussion with my son who's 21 uh, last yeah. year um we were looking should we get should he go to university or not for what he wanted to do and at the end of the day the decision was well you know what because he, he he went and a friend of ours has uh, the daughter went to get this degree in filmmaking at a university yeah. in the US and uh, he went and looked at her website now she's got her degree and he looked at the quality of her work and he said i can do that already now why do I have to go and sit in I, university for four years to learn to do what I already know how to do? Yeah, okay, I'll meet new friends, I'll network, but I have to also pass exams, which means I'm busy studying stuff that I'm never going to need, and it's taking time away from building a business. So I might as well just go and build the business, and then I want to learn a few new things about filmmaking or social media, whatever. I'll just go on a three-day course here, five-day course there, or do an online course, and I've got all the knowledge I need. I've got the opportunity to network at the same time. I don't have to spend... 30, 40 grand a year at university for four years. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, unless you're going to be a doctor or an engineer or an architect, something where you need a piece of paper to allow you to sign off on something, then it, it's it's not really worth going. I mean, that's that's my take anyway, because the way things have changed, a lot of information these days is available online free. Yeah, I, I think a lot of that comes down to, you mentioned it, 
like your son or whoever. It depends what you want to do. If you are steadfast on, I want to be um, a doctor, you go to yeah. school, right? There's nothing wrong with that. You do that a hundred percent. And then even for business though, I find a lot of it comes down to like the individual's discipline and motivation, because I find most people's biggest issue, like they aren't willing to go on YouTube and learn themselves, right? They need the guidance. They need the lesson plan. And that's where you need to go to school because it says you have to be here. You have to do this. And if you don't have anybody telling you what to do, it's all up to you. Are you actually going to put in the work? You're actually going to do this stuff. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I think you can get anything done uh, without, without the degree. Um, but yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens. People are so you going, know, right? in, in America, people are very impressed by people's piece, pieces of paper and their degrees. Yeah. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, and I remember watching, it was a, a series of The Apprentice. This was a few years ago. And there were two teams. And one. And what Trump did at the time, he put all the guys with university degrees in one team and all oh, yeah. the others in, an, in another team. And after yeah. four or five episodes, the ones that hadn't been to university were winning all the time. And, right. you know, and Trump went to university so he's like Walter school of finance he always talks about that and he's saying what is it you guys that have been to harvard and stanford and whatever you're getting thrashed by these high school graduates um what is it with you what is it with you mm-hmm. um and so you know it, i guess it, it, it depends on the individual uh, it does. But I think what the lockdowns have done it's made a lot more people realize that you know a four-year degree is not necessary. and a lot of companies now are realizing this i mean elon musk has said more than once he said i don't look at people's qualifications when i have to hire someone I have yeah. come in, sit down. I give them three problems to solve and I want to see how they solve the problem and if they solve the problem. And then if they haven't, if they haven't even been to high school, but they've solved the problem and done it quickly in a creative way, they get hired. Yeah. I didn't mean, look, I'm in an interesting perspective here because my business um, depends on you having a degree. Right. Um, but oh, yeah. I, I also yeah. can speak transparently about, it. I don't mind. And like you're saying, I believe me, Fab, I know how important that piece of paper it is to people. And our job at ZipScript is actually changing that. Like we don't, you shouldn't have the piece of paper right now, Fab, for when people go to the website, you can verify your own degree on LinkedIn and you get a blue check mark on your LinkedIn profile right now. And that's proving to be very successful. People want to show that, hey, I have this degree. It's verifiable. I actually did do this and it means a lot to me. Also, Fab, though, I get that. You spent four years and $100,000 on getting a degree. It's not easy, right? You deserve to have that blue check mark. But on the flip side of things, just like you said about Elon Musk, and I am in no way comparing myself to Elon Musk, but I have an individual who works for me. He's 19. He graduated high school, decided not to go to college. Yeah, we ha- he's an amazing software engineer, right? We are not, we, we may do education verification. We're doing other ones coming up soon, but we, we believe on the individual's ability first and foremost over credentials, which people might find ironic that I run a credential business, but uh, um, I'm, I'm a firm believer in like, you can be extremely talented without a piece of paper. And uh, let's yeah, come but in and do there's problems. Not, I, mean, I mean, also, you know, pieces of paper, judging people and now there's this thing i think it's a few of the airlines in america now they're looking at um hiring uh people based on their diversity so instead of saying i need 20 pilots i'm going to select 20 people i'm going to take the top 20 no they're not doing that anymore they're saying well I, i'm going to take five white people if they happen to be yeah. in the top 20 and then i have to take so many blacks so many of this so many of that so many of the other um and by doing that they're not going to hire the best um and this is and this is in this is insane, right? Yeah. This is insanity. This is pe- and I know this is they a want to do that in, in the UK. The Royal Air yeah. Force put that decided to put that that in force, and the head of recruitment or something of the Royal Air Force resigned. He said, "This is this is going to be dangerous for the for the safety of our country if we don't select yeah. the best." Yeah, and I think like you're an idiot if you have a racial bias when you're selecting the best i think that's yes, stupid that's you should true. just select the best right like it's exactly. it's equally stupid but the people who want the best don't have a racial bias i'm hiring the best guy best woman best they best them doesn't matter i don't care what you look like you could be a lizard person i'll mm-hmm. hire you if you're the best person for the job but i think forcing this diversity thing actually has negative ramifications 
I also think what it says to that like diversity quota is you're not good enough. Like you can't compete with these people. So you need assistance to help compete with these people. If I was in a minority, that would upset me. I'd be like, I can do this on my own. I don't need your handout. I don't need this. I, I can prove myself on my own. I think it's silly. And like I said, Fab, I know it's a controversial topic. I think it shouldn't be. I think it's absolute sanity. I think it's done intentionally. And I think it just adds more division and more divisiveness. I think it's completely unnecessary. Yeah, I mean, higher off talent. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're living in a world where they're trying to divide all the time now. Um, yeah, with gender issues with political issues. Um, it's almost like you have to be against somebody. You can't I just know. be yourself. Um, yeah. and this is and this is damaging society. I mean, America right now is is almost cut in two. You've got the people that love the U.S. Constitution well, you- and, and Trump, and then the, the 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 socialists that hate Trump and and, and everything that, that that America was created for. Um, and these are people that haven't read or know what the U.S. Constitution says. Um, they don't, probably in school it wasn't taught. I know it's not taught in schools in the U.S. Um, and this is this is dangerous. I mean, even banning people from praying in schools and things like this, um, it's, it's, it's not good um, yeah. because you know, overall everybody's going to suffer. It's intentional though, right? This is going to go on Rumble. Yeah. Yeah, so it's intentional, right? If you have a population... And this is as old as time. If you have a population and they're all united, that's a tricky population to control. If you have a population that's divided, they're far easier to control, right? So if I'm if I'm running things, you know, and well, whoever runs things, we'll leave it there. I'd rather have you hate this group, and I'd rather have you be united with this group, and then I'd have this group who hates this group, because then I can placate to both groups. And then also the upside of that as well is like number one, they're not thinking about bigger issues. They're too consumed by minute, tiny, silly issues to focus on the bigger picture. What does that mean? I can continue to control. I can continue to push you in directions that you don't even know you want to go in um, while distracting you from the real issues. Um, and I, I believe that's what's going on. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's sad. On both see. sides. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's sad to see this because, I mean, I, I'm a great believer in freedom of speech. And I think, you know, I have no problem if someone doesn't agree with me with certain things. It's right that they can express their opinion and I respect their opinion and we can agree to disagree. I'm not going to try and convince you that I'm right and you're wrong. I appreciate that you, you're you thinking as long as you are thinking <laughs> and you're thinking and you've come to your own conclusions, which is fine. And they happen to be different to mine. And I think, you know, people should be allowed to do that. And all this censoring that's going on um, is just not good for the freedom of mankind. No, um, it's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. absolutely terrible. And I mean, I fab. I just spent, for people listening to, I was just in Florida for six months um, in the southern part of Florida. One of the things I noticed in Florida, and for context, I'm from Toronto, Canada. Um, Florida, you know, whatever the media likes to say about Florida, and I know there's different areas of Florida that are different with different types of people. um, But I was in the southern part of Florida. It was very nice. People are much more open and more relaxed and more calm there. And I think that was a direct correlation to them not being locked down forever for them being treated as adults in Florida. Hey, you want to wear a mask? You don't want to wear a mask. Totally up to you. It's fine. Do whatever you want. And uh, I noticed that with that population and it was interesting. And it feels like one of the last places where they're like, they're still free. They're still relaxed. They're still calm. And they don't hate you. If you talk about certain things, like on the left side, people think it's far right Republican everywhere in the Southern Florida parts. It's not like they still have different views. You And the biggest thing though is Fab in Florida, you could talk about it. Nobody's going to yell at you, um, which is a beautiful thing. Um, And and it gives me hope. I I, I love having hope. You need hope, right? Um, But yeah, we'll see. We need to get over this division. And I think Rumble, um, I think that's going to be a big platform for this. I think that's going to be huge. If these guys can get this right, which I think they are, you know, they brought the the Tate man on there. They're bringing other people. You're going over to Rumble. More and more people will be on Rumble. I think it's good. Very good for society. Very good for the world. And it's a great name. It's a great name for a business and for what it does, you know, rumble yeah. out the information. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's an absolutely great name. It's, it, it's interesting. Um, what other businesses do you think, now talking about different businesses, what other businesses or companies do you think are going to emerge out of this lockdown thing? And which ones are going to crumble? I mean, I think tech is obviously, anything in tech is going to continue to shine. Yeah. Um, I, I think a lot of those, like, you know, you know, the small businesses with the storefronts, I think that's becoming inevitably very tricky. Um, yeah. I can't imagine. I don't know how many people lost their livelihoods during the pandemic when they were yeah. lost, locked down. That was super sad. Uh, my situation in comparison to that was absolutely nothing. 
incredibly minimal compared to that. So I think going forward, a lot of that will have to change. I think like traditional shopping centers and stuff will change. I think it'll all be like experience-based stuff to get people to go down and do those showrooms. things. Yeah, I mean, instead of opening 20 stores, you'll open one showroom that will be yeah. very spectacular and very experiential, as you said. And then people yeah. go in there, they experience the product, and then they go online and order. Exactly. And they're I mean, sent to them on a drone, on a drone from a warehouse somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And the drone delivers yeah. to your house. Done. Exactly. So I think like it's it's any you got to think with your tech mind like that's where the, the future is is headed right it's what's here now we're doing this on zoom so I, I mean anything in tech and that's a huge gen generic statement but tech is so there's so many different verticals you can go into tech you know blockchain software as a service whatever it is but I think thinking if I was starting a business today you know and I, I talk to people about this I help guys you know fundraising for their companies or whatever um, it's always tech i i'm i'm leaning and bullish on tech anything tech I, i'm so, not bullish on starting you mentioned it, you mentioned the blockchain what about cryptocurrency do you think that's here to stay or is it just something that's just passing at the moment oh no i i mean i i'm i'm extremely bullish on on cryptocurrency not all cryptocurrencies but i've been bullish on cryptocurrency since 2016 yeah. um i was i was informed about it and i'm 31 for context i was informed about it in 2013 2014 thought it was silly was starting a software business at the time didn't pay attention uh you know and i missed that first boat then i actually researched it i didn't do enough time researching it and then i was like oh wow okay there is something to this and then if if anyone ever wanted uh something to show why it's so important i mean during the pandemic during certain political things that happen in Canada, you know, and just banks, inflation, currently what's going on geopolitically. You know, we need a we need a currency that's not controlled by a central bank, by a central governance, a currency that's controlled and the price is dictated by the people of the planet. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's uh, why I see it never going away. Yeah, what I've noticed is we're coming into a world of decentralization. So we see the monetary system be decentralized with cryptocurrency. We see information be decentralized with the internet. Uh, we see the emergence of you know, citizen journalists, podcasts instead of radio stations, um, YouTube and Rumble instead of TV, TV stations. We see now you can stream uh, shows. So shows aren't like one episode. I mean, someone was saying about, I think it was Star Trek. They were saying what, one episode may last 45 minutes. Another one may last, last one hour, three minutes, because it takes one hour, three minutes to tell that story. So not cramming things into set time. Um, and this is changing uh, the world. The decentralization is putting more power into the hands of the people. And I think this is a good thing. Some people don't think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. And then it's down to you to use your intelligence and figure out if this guy you're listening to or watching is saying the truth or not, or is giving some good information or bad information. But you're an adult and adults can make their own decisions. Well, so that's be. where, yeah, exactly. And that's what they're saying right now, right on the major platform. You're not allowed to, you can't, you're too stupid to make your own decision. So we have to filter it for you. And that's insanity. But that comes back down to why cryptocurrency is here to stay. This is like a, it's a light and a shining tunnel. If I have a currency we can exchange that isn't assaulted by central banks and governments, you know, it can't be overprinted. Um, so it's a beautiful thing. And that's another version of hope for the free world. You know, I'm a big freedom guy. I, I believe in freedom. Yeah. Um, also, other thing, Chris, which I know you're yeah. into, you're always out there learning. And this is really important. Now, um, do you read many books or do you tend to listen to audio books? What's your channel of preference? I've, I, I've tried the audio book thing. I'm a big yeah. podcast guy. I love yeah. podcasts. I've been in podcasts for easily a decade now. And I, I think they're absolutely fantastic. But when it comes to books, I prefer to read. Um, I prefer the hardcover book, normal book. It's just the way I like to do it. I have ADD. And when I go down and have a audio book, I tend to get distracted because it's too easy for me to do something else. I'll go on my computer, I'll check my email, and then I'm not really digesting the information. So with a book, I get to sit down, open it i have to read it so i then consume the information and the knowledge but once again everyone's different find the way you okay like well to let's hone in on the book and then on the podcast so what Got books you, what, what have you what have you been reading lately so do you read fiction non-fiction a mix of both i, I strictly read like business books um okay. you know what have, what have you read lately or what are you reading right now that you, that you found really interesting 
I'm reading a book. I forget the title, um, but it's on uh, M and A and acquisitions. Um, okay. I'll have to get the title for you and share it. Um, okay. You can put it in the notes. So far, it's phenomenal. I'm only four chapters in, but I'm loving it. The okay. reason I'm reading that fab is you mentioned it earlier in the podcast. I, I almost sold my software business uh, for a good chunk of money, um, decided against it, but it was a very tricky month of, do I sell it? Do I not sell it? And I realized, you know, I need more information. I talked to a lot of mentors of mine about it and stuff. They had their opinions. So now I'm going in and I know, say it happens again in the future, we do decide to sell. I want to be completely armed. Um, and actually that comes back down to why I choose personally to read business books. I pick books that I want to read depending on what's going on in my life at that very moment. And that book mm -hmm. I'm going to pick to read is going to help me at that very moment. Um, and then there's certain moments in my life Fab, where I'm not reading because I'm too busy. I'm too in the trenches. I don't need to, but I always find if I'm like, I maybe hit a block, what's going on. Okay. Why am I hitting this block? What do I not know? Find it, find a resource, a book, a podcast on that particular topic. Read it always gives me inspiration, always shows me the way saves me a lot of time. Yeah, great. And what about podcasts? Yeah. What podcasts do you regularly listen to? I listen well, to apart from uh, obviously Quantum Action because you're on yeah. Your <laughs> apart from Quantum Action, one of the world's greatest podcast people. Um, so definitely check out the other episodes here as well. Um, I once again very focused, very very focused for the most part. I have some hobby podcasts, but I listen to the Saster podcast. Mm -hmm. um, I listened to the game, a new one recently called The Game by Alex Hermosi. Uh, mm -hmm. He's kind of a new influencer in the space. I think he's really positive for people if they if they don't know anything about sales or just general business stuff. He he's doing a really good job over there. Yeah, to him yeah 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 he's good um and, and i listen to the anderson 16 uh podcast as well a16z um but then i have hobbyist podcasts i'm a huge car guy um so okay. i listen to a couple of fun car podcasts the smoking tire and stuff like that um okay. but that's pretty much it for the time good now just going back to books what's one book or two or three books maybe business books that have really influenced you as an entrepreneur I mean, honestly, there's been uh, there's been so many. There was one. I'm going to look it up right now, and I know the individual was controversial, but I think it has a good story behind it. Um, mm -hmm. The guy's name was Gurbash Jahal, and uh, when I dropped out of university, I uh, nobody nobody believed in me. They thought it was a terrible idea, at least in my sphere of influence. And I knew I wanted to start a business, so I went to the library. And I asked the library lady for books, right? What kind of business books can I have? Um, it's called The Dream by Garbash mm -hmm. Shahal. Um, picked this book up, went to a McDonald's, read this book. This book changed my life. And this book was basically a pretty simple topic. The guy, I won't get too into it, but the, kind of the meaning behind the book was Tiger Woods can be this, so can I. You know, if X can be this, so can I. No matter where you are in your life, you can do this. You have to decide you're going to do this and you have to decide you are going to be this. And that was powerful. I was like 20 or 19 at the time. Yeah. Um, and I took that and I ran with it. Um, and I find any book at any point in time, like if you, you can find something, but that book, I, I'd say that book had the most, most uh, meaning on me. And then another one actually would be Poke the Box by uh, Seth Godin. Uh, yep. short book 70 yep. something pages yep. uh but in just terms of I, I mindset, love Seth Godin. yeah I, I read a lot yeah 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 that was great um and then uh one that when I was a little more advanced the uh, one that was good for me at the time when I was going through that journey was zero to one by Peter Thiel it's classic yep, I read that one uh, yep. yeah very very classic book I think those are like foundational books for for entrepreneurs okay, zero to one read, at least have you read the classic uh, think and grow rich by Napoleon Hill I actually haven't. And I know a lot of people talk about that book. I've seen a lot of excerpts on it. Like I've seen a lot of videos of people talking about it, but you know, interest, I, like, I already think like that. I'm, I'm, yeah. I am that person, you know, I'm like, I, 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 I believe in the kind of what the book stands on. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting. I mean, a lot of, I've read it a number of times and it's always enlightening and interesting. Um, if you Is there controversy it? around that book? In terms of, uh, did he actually get the quotes from the guys? Like, does anybody know? Yeah, you know? some people say that, but you know, what he effectively did at the time, he went and interviewed the 500 most successful people in the world, and he discovered that they had some common traits. Um, yeah. And in the book, he mentions a number of these people, and those stories are true. Now, whether or not he did get commissioned by Andrew Carnegie, who at the time was the richest man in the world, that's the, the official story. Napoleon Hill went to interview yeah. him for Success Magazine, and 
uh, Andrew Carnegie liked the way he was interviewing him and turned around and, and, and offered him to uh, introduce him to these main successful people to go out and interview them and see if there's a roadmap, see if there's some common traits that these people have. Um, but when you look at the, 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 the principles of Think and Grow Rich it, and you look at anybody that's had super success, they followed that blueprint. Whether they knew they were yeah. following it or not, it's almost like it, it, this was designed in heaven. Yeah. Um, and think and grow rich. A lot of people think it's all about money. It's not. It's about personal development. I'd say, yeah. Uh, because you take anybody that has climbed a mountain, cl climbed Mount Everest, or won a gold medal at the Olympics, um, they followed that blueprint. Yeah, and I'm not saying I. When I bring up the controversy thing, kind of where I was going with that is whether or not it's true or not. It's it's marketing. It's positive. And like you said, if people read that book and they become better because of it, the book's done its job. That's a phenomenal yeah, thing. You know, I, you know what it is? Yeah. You know, yeah. Napoleon Hill died many years ago. Um, I mean, today there's a lot of controversy and, and fake information circulating about people that are alive. So Yeah, I, exactly. And, and so if they can do that for people that are alive today, have a presence, presence on social media, it's going to be yeah. a lot easier for someone that's dead. <laughs> so yeah, at the end of the day, you have, to, you have to look at the information and say to yourself, well, these 10 people applied this information and got these 10 results and they're good results. Yeah. So this information must work. Um, 100%. A lot of people criticize Napoleon Hill and think and go rich, but they've never read the book. So right. you know, you've got to read the book first and then ask yourself the question, does this stuff work? Um, yeah. Worked in, in, in the cases of all these different people mentioned in the book. And there are various other versions of think and grow rich uh, applied to modern times with more modern stories. <clears throat> yep. And the same thing, you know, it produces but, results. So, you 100%. know, there's a lot that you can learn from other people. Jim Rohn used to call it other people's experience. Um, and I had Jim Rohn, the original Tony Robbins. Yeah, I, yeah. I, was, I had the privilege of, of being in, in a live event with Jim Rohn back in my Herbalife days when I was selling weight loss yeah. products. Jim Rohn was one of the vice presidents of the company. And I was living in Milan, Italy at the time, and he came to give us a lecture. And that's when I discovered Jim Rohn. And then I bought all these tapes. It was, there were tapes at the time and started to listen to his stuff. And then I then discovered that Tony Robbins had started off with the Jim Rohn stuff. I didn't know. I was kind of in parallel listening to the two. Um, and uh, and then I, I discovered that, you know, Jim Rohn was the original guy that Tony Robbins went to that kind yeah. of opened up the whole world of self-help and personal development to Tony Robbins, which then made Tony Robbins become who he is today. I think it's amazing. And like what you're saying about the book too, I know there's another book that people have issue with sometimes too, but a lot of people support the secret, right? Um, yeah. I think all of this comes back down though, big time, kind of like the core foundation of this is, is mindset. You got to have the right mindset and then you need to couple the right mindset with discipline. And if you do that, you're going to win, right? Uh, believe, 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 believe. And, uh, and then happiness can, can come out the other side. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's important. But, you know, one criticism I do have towards the, the, the so-called self-help gurus is that not everyone is designed to become a multimillionaire or a billionaire. And so some of these self-help gurus or people that sell seminars, they're like, come to my seminar, pay $1,000, and I'll make you a millionaire next week. Yeah, It doesn't work that way because we're not all designed to do that. Uh, right. So what you need to do as an individual is discover what talents you have and why you're here. Um, and I did Agreed. an interesting interview I, with a lady that's just now on Rumble or YouTube, whichever platform you're listening to. She's an astrologer, Marilyn Light, her name is. And a lot of people, when you hear the word astrology, they always say, oh, that's hocus pocus. And what she does is she um, looked at ancient stuff. And when Abraham was born in the Bible, the people around Abraham's family looked up to the stars and based on the position of the stars said, this baby is going to become a great man. And then this science was lost. Astronomy and astrology used to be the same thing. And then reading the stars, reading someone's, the position of the stars, the minute they are born. And what Marilyn was saying in the interview, and those of you who haven't watched it, I encourage you to watch this, this interview. She said, it's almost like we were in heaven before with God. And we decided what we were going to do during our journey, our mortal journey. And so then in order for us to do what we need to do, we need to be born at a certain time, at a certain location. Interesting. Um, and it's very, very interesting. Her whole yeah. take on the whole astrology thing. And it's not about reading your, your horoscope in a magazine. It's about being specific about where was Chris Harper born, when and at what time. 
So we can take a photograph of the sky in that moment and see why you were here. I had this done for me and I was shocked. This woman didn't know me. Um, Does she do this? Yes. Like yeah, can you go to, okay, yeah. But no, no, it's scientific though. It's- oh, You'll have to science. link it to me. I'm curious. Yeah. My girlfriend would also love this, yeah. It's pure science. It's not, oh, I felt this, I felt that. No, 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 it's none of this crystal ball stuff. It's pure science. And it's very, very interesting because the ancients knew this. And then yeah. this science kind of got lost and the story- told I feel like we're thing. very rigid now, especially in the scientific community. I mean, you saw that with the pandemic. There was yeah. no, uh, you couldn't have debate or discourse. And if you were anybody, like I don't have any doctor credentials, people in my family do, but if you believed in one thing, believe in another thing, if it wasn't the main thing, then you, everyone knows they, uh, they got rid of you. And I think we need to get rid of that rigidness and be more open-minded in general, like with what you're talking about with the moment you're born, the stars, like be open to it. What's what, what can, why, why be so negative? Try something, try something new. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've be got to be an open mind and, and you got to be also, um, if you have an opinion of something and it's maybe unpopular or different yeah. to those around you, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And if, and if people attack you, just shrug it off. Don't care. Well, if you're an entrepreneur and people are doing that, typically it's a good sign. Typically yeah. that means you're on the right path, right? Um, if it was like immediately obvious to everyone, then it's probably not well, a good know, idea. The thing is, Chris, you know, as an entrepreneur, unless you have a family of super entrepreneurs and businesses that are super successful. But even then you may be trying out something in a different direction to what the other people have done. You've got to find the right mentors. Um, I mean, the first people to jump on people. And I talk about this in my first book, your attitude is your altitude. I talk about the, yeah. the dream stealers and the most dangerous dream stealers are the people that love you. Not those that don't love you, not those that don't want you to be successful. Those that love you that are shooting out advice to you because they don't want you to fail. They don't want you to get hurt. They don't want you to lose money. They don't want you to waste your time. And sometimes these people are the most dangerous because you don't want to offend them. It's maybe your father, your mother, your sister, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, your son, whoever it may be, or your close best friend. And this is dangerous. And this is where we have to be careful where we get our advice from. Um, Correct. We're doing that. It. Yeah. I mean, that is so factual. I dealt with that when I was on my journey, right? Um, and uh, many people do. Um, and like you said, you call, you call them dream killers. Is that what you call them? Dream stealers. Dream stealers. Dream stealers. stealers. Okay. Yeah, hundred percent. And they do, and you're right. But I, I think is I like understand those people that did it in my life. One thing I look back on is I don't. I'm not angry at them for it because no, all no, they they're doing it because they love you. Yeah, yeah safety, safety and security. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so you know, be safe. Don't go over here and do this crazy thing where you know everything can fail and you have to start again or something. But uh, yeah, I agree. I think the best way to find mentors as well, if you're in this business world. Um, for me, at least, has always been doing shit. So the more shit I do, those mentors end up finding me because they're like, oh, that's cool. I'm poking. I'm poking the box. Seth Godin saw sending this email, cold email of this guy. Oh, you were in here, cold email. Like, hey, we're doing this. And I think there's a mutual respect, especially in the entrepreneurial society, where if you're doing something, you, know, you have an MVP out and you hit up a guy who might have a business that's worth 50 million or a hundred million, but you're in kind of the same business. You say, Hey, I just built this product in my basement. You know, yeah. it's live right now. I'm looking for like, I have a quick question on this. Like I have respect for the guy that does that, um, who will hit me up on his come up journey. So I always think like do stuff and then the mentors will come around. Oh yeah. That's really, really important. Chris, thank you very much for being on the show. And uh, I posted the links below for people to see where, where to find you. And that awesome. we'll have you on again soon because we're going to be doing mastermind discussions. And so those of you who are watching, we are going to have three guests on at the same time. And we're going to be discussing a success book or principle or whatever. And we're going to have a bit of a chat, chit chat about this and see what kind of advice we can give collectively to those of you that are watching in that. So look out for that and check out this other video I did with Marilyn Light about the whole astrology thing. Very, very interesting. And remember to subscribe, whether you're watching this on Rumble or whether you're watching on YouTube or another platform, remember to subscribe, comment below, and give us a thumbs up. And that's all from me on Quantum Action. And this is all here to take you to infinity and beyond. See you on the next one.